that sense of security and the feeling of self worth being destroyed. Hate crime is driven to record high levels. Few of our same sorts of propaganda that were refused in the 1930s. Some 2015 new independent living funds will cease to exist, leaving 18,500 people with the highest support needs in jeopardy of losing their ability to live independently and take part in society in any way. This has been so as equitable since the funds have been chosen to new applicants since 2010. However, we don't agree that dragging everyone down to the lowest level is the way forward for disabled people's equality, and we know that because of the vicious funding cuts. Local authorities have faced tried on care budgets. They will not be able to finance the shortfall left when the independent living fund closes, especially after 2016 when default funding will run out. Unlike local authority and healthcare funding, which tends to focus simply on keeping the state of people alive and clean, the funding available from ILS helps disabled people to take part in society on an equal basis to non disabled the current cost of the Independent Living Fund is only £320 million a year, and the average weekly cost of an INS support package is £346 a week. That's a tiny proportion of UK government spending. It also compares very favourably to cost in residential care. <coughs> For instance, Winterbourne View cost an average £3,500 a week. Scotland has committed to keeping the ILS open. Scotland has committed to re keeping it and reopening it to new applicants. If Scotland can do it, I don't see why England can't. Yeah. Yeah. In the consultation carried out last year on the closure of the Independent Living Fund for 2015, of the 78 local authorities who responded to the consultation, <coughs> 47 of them said to disabled people with the highest support needs. The closure of the independent living fund would result in either residential care home admissions or significantly reduced care packages, which would affect people's ability to live independently and enjoy an equality of life. Local authority budgets have been slashed and other care funding in England was cut by £991 million by 2011 and a further £890 million by 2012. Local government budgets overall affected the cut by another 28% in 2013 to 15. As austerity results in cuts to local authority funding, social care funding is already a breaking point, even without the loss of independent living funds. Karen's support for independent living has been underfunded for many years, and a 1.2 billion funding gap in social care support for disabled people under 65 been exposed by scope of the care crisis report. This survey found that nearly four out of ten disabled people are unable to eat, wash, dress, or get out of the house due to underfunded services in their area. And over half of them feel actually isolated or have experienced declining mental health because they have lost care support for independent living services. In many local authorities, charging for care services has rocketed. One woman has told us that although she has passed out three cares in about seven years, she is now paying over £50 a week for the same level of service. In Warwickshire, one third of people lost their eligibility for free care, but we don't have um, close to care funding in Warwickshire. We call it transformation of social care. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the government has also introduced funding reforms based on the Dilmer recommendations. But these reforms will not improve the care and support of independent living for the majority of disabled adults, as they will only benefit those with substantial savings, uh, obviously mainly people who vote Tory, or those who own their own home. According to the government's own figure, only 100,000 people will benefit from the um, changes to that label to put in the new care plan, leaving 1 million 400,000 people who won't benefit at all. Changes. Work capability assessments, the fourth test to gain entitlement to EFA, an 
trying to get a job in a different part of the country, it's virtually impossible for disabled people. Um, the other real barrier to employment is the lack of accessible and affordable housing. Because if you get offered a job, sometimes you can't actually find anywhere to move to. There's a massive shortage of accessible social housing, and already two, over 2 million disabled people are forced to rent in the private sector. But the reduction in the local housing allowance rates to the 30 percentile rent in each fourth market rental area, rather than the 50 percentile as it was before, means disabled people, both in and out of work, can't afford to rent these properties. I think it's really important that politicians do remember how ever that disabled people, whether they can carry out safe work or not, are valuable members of society. They have to do valuable voluntary work. They contribute to their communities, their families, their churches or other places of worship, and they need to be able to continue to do so. We need a cumulative impact assessment. That all, most of all, what we must have is an end to these cuts and proper investment into supporting disabled 